Hey everyone, the Network Berg here, and today we'll be discussing how to configure firewall policies on a FortiGate device. Before we jump into the actual configuration, let's just take a moment to discuss what firewall policies are and why we need them. In today's networking world, security has become a large concern. There are many bad actors out there that are looking for ways to gather private and company information that they can use to extort your company. This has a negative impact on your money because you will lose money if you get hacked. And also your company's reputation will suffer. How likely is a customer to come back after a hacker was able to get their information due to a lack of security on your environment? That is where firewall policies come into place. They work in conjunction with the rest of the network security platform where we are able to define what traffic can go in and out of our network. We can secure our network with policy sets that we can apply on our firewalls. Policies work in a very sequential manner where the firewall has a policy table. It will read the policies from top to bottom and it will inspect the traffic. Remember that is a keyword. It will inspect the traffic to look at what's happening inside all of the packets that passes through all of the segments. It will look at the source and destination interfaces. It will look at the source and destination IP addresses and will also look at the type of service. What this is, is a port AT traffic and running on TCP. So Firewall's job is to inspect that traffic and then we can decide to either accept or drop this traffic. That comes in very handy for us as administrators, right? And then we can also finally clamp on our rule sets to ensure that our network is very well protected instead of leaving everything open where we are open to attack. Let's quickly jump into the configuration now. I've already set up a little network here. We've got a 40 gate device with a port going to the internet, that's port one. Then we have port two that will be running into a switch. Don't worry about the switch, it's just there to connect multiple devices onto that same port. This LAN section will be running off of 192.168.0.0 slash 24 network. The firewall is dot one. We have PC one, which is dot 50. We have PC two, which is dot 51. I have also created a management port for me to connect my computer directly to the firewall on port 10. This is using the 192.168.99.0 slash 24 network, but it's literally just there, so my machine can access the firewall uh, over the GUI. If, if you don't know much about GNS3 or how to set it up, I do have a whole section on my blog how to configure this from scratch so that you can also run these labs yourself. I will post a link in the description below. Okay, so let's quickly jump into the configuration and get onto the firewall. So let's go onto our browser. I'll just refresh this. You will get to the landing page of the login. We log in since this is a very basic setup there's no passwords or anything defined yet there's literally only ip addresses assigned to the interfaces now in order to configure a firewall policy we need to go to policy and objects we'll go to ipv4 policies you can create ipv6 policies they work exactly the same except they will use ipv6 addresses and not ipv4 addresses we will go over how to do that in a different video Okay, so now that we're in the policy section, this is the policy table. Whenever a firewall is shipped out of the box, it will come with an implicit deny rule. This is the base policy. So if no traffic is matched that is inspected to your policy table, it will get dropped by this policy. Now let's go ahead and create ourselves an actual policy. We click on create new. And then we can give our policies names. For me, it's always important to name your policies correctly or try and give them a name of what their function is. It makes it easier if there are other administrators also working on the firewalls. This way, if somebody else logs in, they can quickly understand what this policy is for instead of trying to figure it out themselves. So let's call this uh, full internet access. The incoming interface. That'll be port two because that's where the traffic will be coming from, from these computers. So they'll come, go into the switch, they'll come into port two. So that's our incoming interface. Our outgoing interface will be port one because that's what we've set up for the internet. Great. 
Now we need to define our sources. If we just select all in this address field, it will mean anything coming from port two would be able to do what we tell it to do. This could be a security concern potentially because what if a hacker gets onto your network and they somehow manipulate the traffic? Um, if, there's none, if the IPs aren't configured on the interfaces, it's not so much of a concern, but keep that in mind. It's always best practice to set up your policies with very specific source addresses, but I'm just going to use all for now just to prove to you or show to you how to create a policy quickly. The destination, we can create that as all as well because this will be going to the internet, right? It will be going to a bunch of IP addresses that we potentially cannot know about. Let's make the service, again, we can make it all, but this is also pretty unsecure because what happens if we have users that maybe uh, abuse the network by going to websites they're not supposed to go to, or maybe they use this for streaming or downloading, for a company network that would not be acceptable. So if we select all, they would be able to do that, but we could uh, define it. Let, let's actually do that. Let's define it. Let's say HTTP, HTTPS, because that's browsing, right? And let's also just say ICMP. So now our users will be able to browse and they will be able to ping. This NAT option, it's, uh, if, if this is traffic going out to the internet, it's always recommended to NAT your traffic, obviously, because the internet will never understand how to get back to your private IP, but it will be able to get to your public NAT address. In this case, it will be using the outgoing interface address. So that will be the IP address of port one. So any traffic that leaves the network will be masked or masqueraded as 172.16.15.89 in this case. Um, let's scroll down. We have the option of security profile. So this is only where we can put in things like DNS filters and web filters. You know that the UTM functionality that comes with firewalls. So we will go over that in a different video as well, but this is very useful. You can do a lot with uh, the UTM functionality. Here we can set the logging. Do we not want to log? Do we only want to log security events? Like if there's some type of uh, security concern or log everything so that we can do some debugging on the traffic if needed. A comment works the same as a name. I generally leave this blank, but you could write there some more description if, if needed. I'm just going to click OK. Great, now we have a policy for full internet access, which will allow ICMP, HTTP and HTTPS from any source going to any destination. Let's quickly test this and see if the policy works. I've already started these machines up, but uh, we can double click there and it will bring it up in this VNC. So here's PC1, it's this computer. I've already configured the IP addresses and default gateway and that. So if we just go to the terminal, we can do a ping 8.8.8.8. Very great. It's uh, responding so we know everything is working. We can do the same on PC2. So I'm just going to bring up PC2. Ping. Why is that failing? I know it's probably because we didn't allow DNS traffic uh, as part of the services in our policy. Let's add that quickly. I'm going to go back to the firewall, right click and we can say edit or you can just double click on the policy. And here by the services, we just go plus again and let's add DNS because our DNS server is 8.8.8.8. .8 but if we deny the DNS traffic, it won't be able to resolve host names. Let's quickly get back to that PC. Let's see if we can ping Google now. Great, we can ping Google. So we've defined a follow policy on the firewall, but let's just uh, drill it down a little bit more. Let's just be more selective with our traffic as well. I'm going to make a change or add an additional policy where we deny ICMP traffic from LAN PC1. So that is 
192.168.0.50 just to show you how to create an address as well. So let's go back on the firewall. Let's click on create new. Let's call this deny ICMP from LAN PC1. Okay. Incoming interface, again, port two, because we know it's coming from the LAN. Outgoing interface, port one, because it's going to the internet again. So here we want to define a source. So when we click on the plus and we see the drop down here, I've already created the address here, but for interest sake, let's just create another address from scratch. So to create an address from the policy that you're trying to bring up, click on this little plus next to the search field. This will allow us to create an address while we are in this section of the, of the firewall. We don't have to go to addresses here to add it. So it saves us a little bit of time. Okay, let's call this LAN PC1. And then we can put in the IP address 192.168.0.50. I'm just gonna copy the IP. There's a type here. So we do have FQDN, which is a domain name, a geography. So you could potentially block or allow things or send things to certain destinations like a country, like the US or the UK or Russia or China. It, it, it's just, uh, that's what geography does. IP range is just a long range of IPs, obviously. And subnet is what we will be using because we're gonna put in that IP. We're gonna call it slash 32 this is just one host right if it was more hosts we would extend the subnet let's click on okay you should see the new object is here and it is highlighted for us to easily see it let's click it great you see the source is now the 0 0.50 the destination it's still going to be all since it's the internet but let's create another address specifically to Google's DNS server. So let's call this Google DNS. Subnet, again, let's make it, sorry about that, 8.8.8.8, and it will only be for this specific address. You'll see Google's DNS is here now. And that is the 8.8.8 address. If you hover over it, it will show you the subnet as well. Schedule, we're always gonna run this, but if you wanted to only let it run certain times, you could create a different schedule, which would be on either certain days or certain times. Can be useful to block things like Windows updates during office hours, but allowing it during the evenings so that it uh, isn't as impactful to your users. Let's set the service to ICMP. And we're going to set this to be denied now. You see all of the other options go away because the moment any of the traffic is inspected and matched, it's just going to drop it. So let's OK this. There's our policy. Let's quickly see if it's working. This is PC1. So let's say ping 8.8.8.8. Still responding. Why is that? If you recall, I mentioned that firewalls work on a hierarchy or a sequence. So the policy at the top will be called first and then the policies at the bottom follow. Since that PC is part of this policy first and it's already allowing ICMP here, it never gets matched with the next policy. So to fix that, we can just drag this policy above the first one. We can do so by holding down on it and then just moving it above. Now the policy is above the first one. So that's just the policy ID, but the, the sequence has changed now. So if we go back to PC1 and we run a ping now, it is failing. And it is because traffic is actually matching this policy. If we refresh the page, you will see that we do have traffic hitting the policy and it is being denied now. So you've learned how to actually add policies on a 40 gate as well as define custom addresses and adding services and how to accept or deny traffic. So that's really useful for anybody beginning in FortiGate firewalls and you enjoy working with network security. We will be continuing with more advanced topics later on. 
but you have done something great here. So I do congratulate you if you've been trying to do this yourself or if you've learned something new. I'm going to end this video off now. I will put a link again to my blog in the description where you can learn more about 48 devices. You can also learn how to install GNS3 or other things. There's Cisco, there's Mikrotik, there's general network topics there as well. Uh, I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.